In the basic course, I've explained how logic and math works in wire. But now we're doing instancing, so the math and logic get a little different. There's also math and logic nodes that only work with collection, so there's that. Lucky for you, this stuff is really easy, so we'll go through it fast. Let's get started. When you are doing basic math operations, like subtraction and multiplications, you can either do the operation with the collection and a single value, or two collections. In this example, I am multiplying. All the values from the linear node get individually multiplied by two. But down here, I'm multiplying the linear node with a sequence node. In this case, each index gets multiplied with a value at the same index of the other collection. In other words, index zero of the linear node gets multiplied with index zero of the sequence node. Index one of the linear node gets multiplied with index one of the sequence node, and so on. Logic operates in a similar way. Here I have a collection of booleans being compared with an equal node set to false. All the values in the collection of booleans are being compared against false. When I input a collection to test against, each index gets tested against its index in the opposite collection, just like the math nodes. Simple as that. Keeping on the subject of logic, you know comparators and you know how to use them, because I've taught you how to use them in the basic course. So I can keep this short and show you which comparators only work with collections. None, all and any join the comparator party. All outputs true if all inputs are true. None outputs true if none of the inputs are true. And any outputs true if any of the inputs are true. And that's all the logic you need to know when you're working with instancing. In this example, we'll use some logic to change the color of our moving rectangles um, based on their height. So I'll start out with some rectangles, create an edge out of them, and I will want to move them around, so I'll create a transform. Now we'll create a nice movement pattern with sine oscillators like we did in the first tutorial. One for the X, one for the Y. Move it around. Now we'll create some linear nodes to offset the phases. All right, reduce the size a little bit and the amplitude as well. Oops. Maybe play around with the linear so we can get something weird going on, some cool pattern. All right, that's nice. Now we want to render them to shape. Uh, let's pick white, it's not very relevant, we'll change that. Now, based on their height of the rectangle, we want to change the color. So we'll take the variable, this value, because that's the y. We'll say, if it's greater than zero, which basically means it's above the middle, this area over here. If it's greater, then do something. So what do we want to do? We want to switch between two colors. So let's create a switch. As soon as I connect it, the switch will instance, and because it's a Boolean, uh, because it, the greater produces Boolean, uh, the switch will become a Boolean switch. Simply create color in, or better, create two of them. First, I'll set it to red. The second color, let's say blue. And now, as long as the colors are above zero, uh, it is blue, below red. And we could create some smoothing. I really like color smoothing. And now our rectangles are changing color as they pass the zero point. Of course, you can change this. Uh, you could also combine it with the X, for example, and create a four-way color um, scheme like that. Um, just a little 
real life example of how you can use logic in instancing patches. So for this example, we're gonna create a quite complex patch. So it's uh, gonna take a while, grab yourself a cup of coffee. Um, I will, I wanna have some shapes that move, a lot, move around randomly. Uh, I wanna have automated color um, uh, differences so that each instance has slightly different color. And I wanna show you uh, another very powerful uh, logic node uh, when you're using instancing uh, called within uh, to sort of create an area in the patch where shapes get bigger and get smaller as they move out. Anyway, enough talk, let's start with circles and a transform. I'm picking transform because I know I want to play with the scale later on, so move simply won't cut it. Now I want to create some random movement. And for this I'll use Perlin noise and I'll use two Perlin noise nodes, one for the X and one for the Y. Like that. And pack it in and we already have our first random movement. Of course, we want to instance it. Uh, so the Perlin noise needs some kind of uh, some kind of offset. I'll simply use the linear node, and let's say 100 instances. Let's go big, go big or go home. To the face offset, I'll copy this. Uh, it helps to get like a bit weird values in here. And we are getting our, our messy movement already. Let's uh, lower the size of the circle. Maybe like even smaller than that. And now I want to lower the speed down quite a bit. And the amplitude of the X can be larger because uh, our screen is wider than it is high. So let's scale this a bit up. Yeah, that look, looks good for a random movement. Um, next up is when the circles enter the, the middle, I want them to be bigger than when they're outside. So we'll take the pack, which are X and Y coordinates, and I'll check if they are within a certain limit. Cool thing is, if I input this, this automatically text tests against a float2 value. So um, if the top is uh, minus one, the bottom is one, then we want to be somewhere in between this ratio. Right? Oh, of course, our screen is uh, wider, so we might want to uh, increase this. Like the X, let's say 8. And we can get a, we get a big array of a uh, big collection of true and falses out of that. And for this, we'll simply use a switch again, like we did in the previous example. And let's say if it's true, so if they are within, they'll have their regular scale of uh, one or 100%, and outside of the center, they will be 0.5. As you can see here, as soon as they pop in, they, uh, they grow. I think we can increase the X on the Perlin noise a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Um, you can probably guess already what's next. It's adding smooth because this is way too uh, erratic. Let's make this move really slow. And you can see the dots fading in and growing back in as they go. Nice, this will be our movement pattern for this patch. Uh, time to throw it into a shape render. Now I wanna do something interesting with the colors. Let's for now just give it white. Um, I want you to be able to have a color and then create color variations by using the random node. So let's start with just a simple color. 
this is something that the user could pick. Uh, and as you know, if you just pick, let's pick a, a color, it has, it's a float for. So the first value is the, uh, the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, and then the alpha channel. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to add and subtract to that randomly. So I will create a random node, set it to a float for, because that's what, that's what we're having, and we're adding these together. Right, so we're going to add a random color, so to speak, to the existing color. I don't want to change the alpha, so I'll set this to zero. So yeah, whatever alpha you pick here, this is the alpha slider. Uh, I want you to I want the user to have control over that. Uh, the values are way too large because adding, let's say, uh, uh, having here like a four zero point four eight for the red channel. Adding 0.5 to that will already be uh, full red, uh, so that's the, the the values are too large. So let's say something like minus 0.1, minus 0.2, minus 0.2, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Now we're all having the same color. We're going to expand on this later on. And if I trigger it, I have small variations upon the original purple color. Right? So the color variation part works. Uh, now I want to instance it. So we'll have, we're working with 100 instances, so I want to have 100 colors. And I want to have 100 random values. Let's see how that looks. All right, now each color has its own slight variation to it. Now we want to add some control over this. So I want to give the user a float. And I want to, let's say, run from minus one to one. That's the most extreme you could add to a color. Um, anything beyond that is, is one. Um, but I need a float for. There are no float for sliders, so there's just a float in. So I'll pack it together to create a float for. So this value will go into the pack. And the, the W here would be the, the alpha. So we can keep that to zero. Now, a little trick we can do here is create the on change node. So whenever the uh, value changes, this is gonna send out the float for, but we don't care about the float for, we, can, we care about that this is an event flow which can trigger the random node. So each time we pull the slider, we get a new color, right? So we don't have to put, put, put in a trigger button or something like that. Um, now this will be our max value uh, oh, we can also pull that from the on change. This will be our max value, but we also need our minus value, which is just the opposite. So what we could do is get a negate, which turns every po any positive value into a negative value and negative value into a positive value and put it into the minus. And now we have color shifts, but I think ah, the pack was not instanced. So that was a mistake on my part. And now if we go all the way up to one, we get a huge color variation. And if we go down, let's say 0.1, we get this really subtle color change. And you can still, the alpha is still untouched. So that's cool. Um, I wanna finish this patch up. Normally it would just uh, this be it, but I wanna, wanna finish this one off. So uh, let's say we're creating a blur. We're adding a little blur to it. Uh, I'll keep these values. No, we can blur a little bit more. Yeah, make them really vague. I want them to be like auras. We'll pick a video mixer. I wanna have four channels. I wanna have one channel for, let's create a hub to 
because I like to keep my patches clean. Hub does nothing. It just patch, it's just a patch routing uh, option. Um, I want to have my original signal on top. I want to have the blur around it. I might want me to lower this one a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I want to have a solid color in the back. I just want to have a black background for this. So that works nicely. And next I want to add uh, a transform. And then the transform is going back into the video mixer with a video, um, so we get video feedback. Lower this one a little bit of the quality of the blur. So now we're just playing. All right. So we get the, we get the traces from the circles from the from the video feedback, and I'm going to increase the scale a tiny bit. So we get this. I, that's even too much. So I want to have like 1.01, 1.01. .01. And play with these values. Until we get a nice result. Uh, that's pretty cool. Decrease the opacity a little bit more. And now we can play with stuff like the Perlin noise, increase the amplitude. And we have ourselves quite a cool visual patch. Just some patching from front to end using some uh, mathematics with instancing with the add, uh, combining two collections, uh, showing the, some logic with the within nodes. Um, so yeah, this is pretty well-rounded. If you understand what I'm doing here, you are very well on your way to becoming an instancing pro.